So this is a how a driver's side or passenger side seatbelt looks like outside of a car. As you can see, my seatbelt is jammed. I'll show you how I unjammed this so I could reuse it, and you'll also see a nice teardown on the seatbelt mechanism, which was on either a Chrysler 300, Dodge Charger, or Dodge Magnum. But of course, this would be similar to the other Chrysler Dodge Jeep models. I should mention that this buckle was not in a car accident, which is why I'm repairing it. If it wasn't a bad accident, then I would just buy a new buckle. To see how I removed and reinstalled this, you can check out that great video in the description below. Anyway, doing this is for demonstration, and if you do this, you are responsible. If this video demonstration helps, gives you a good understanding of the operation of your seatbelt, or to unjam your seatbelt, then please like and subscribe, and mention in the comments anything that would help other viewers out. Anyway, these are all the tools you're going to need to fix your seatbelt. You'll need a hammer, preferably a mallet, a flat tip screwdriver, which you'll use as a pry bar, a really small flathead screwdriver, a Torx T10 and Torx T20 screw bit, possibly an adapter, and a power drill. I'll put these all in the description below. Let's get to it. So this bottom end, I'll get to later as part of the teardown, but if you're just trying to unjam your belt, then don't worry about it. You should still understand what this winder does in case you open it, which you'll see later. Anyway, use a small thin tip screwdriver to pry off the top of this cap. Go all the way around and focus on the corners. You can use a longer screwdriver now, just for more leverage. See right here, those are the three plastic tabs. That's why you pry up by the edges. Okay, let's take a look at this. This is a gravity ball. You can uh, go ahead and pry this upwards. Put it to the side. Remember how this looks, this wheel with this orange piece. If you take a look right here, there's a spring. Grab your small flat tip screwdriver. Pry this piece upwards. Do not lose this little spring. Place it to the side. And we got this right here. Pick this up, turn it around. You'll see the spring. So just leave it on here. So now to unlock this, this right here, when you pull hard, see, it locks up. Now when you do it nice and slow, look at that, it's free. See? Hard. Now to loosen it nice and slow, see? Because if you're in a crash or whatever, and it's a, and you go forward, it stops you. That's the purpose of a seatbelt, after all, right? To keep you from going through the windshield. So, we're going to unwind this as much as possible. By the way, if I let go of this, it will slowly retract. Just got to the pretty much the end. As you can see, grab a clip. It won't retract anymore, but you're gonna need a, a clip here just to hold this when you reinstall this later Now for the winder the reason this side is taken off is if you Want the seat belt to feel tighter because the belt feels loose currently Likewise, you can adjust this if your belt is tight and you want it to be looser Which is usually not recommended you need to decide if you want to do this side or not Please mention in the comments if you think this winder should be removed or if you think it is not necessary to remove. This should help others out. The other side was removed because the belt was jammed and in reverse lockup to the point where the belt would not move freely back and forth. Anyway, to remove this, use a Torx T10 screw bit. Now, while holding down the top, lightly pry a corner, you will feel pressure that is the winder that wants to spin. Sounds kind of cool. <laughs> like I'm shuffling a deck of cards. Hold it lightly so it doesn't fly out and whack you in the face. Before I wind this back up, I'll continue with this teardown so you can better understand the mechanics of how this belt works. 
but normally you will not have to remove anything else. I'm removing this with a Torx T20 screw bit. These screws are different sizes and need to be put back in where they were originally later. I will tear down this piece soon, but first, if you haven't already pulled out the full length of the seatbelt webbing, then you can take it out from this metal piece and unwind it here if you prefer. When done, put it back in. Now, this yellow tab wire harness is actually connected in the car, but it's important to know how easy it is to get this sensor off. You just need a small flathead screwdriver. Look for a slot, usually on the bottom, and pry it upwards. You want to lift the tab a little bit and then pull off this airbag seat sensor known as the pre-tensioner connector. Now to work on this metal piece. Again, as a warning, do not take this apart if you are planning on reusing your belt buckle. Once I open this up, the balls inside will come out and it will be very difficult to get them back in perfectly. I'm using a Torx T20 screw bit to remove the screw on top and on the side. To better understand, this piece connects to the airbag through the wire harness. And when the airbag is deployed, so too does this piece. This chamber explodes and pushes all the steel balls out, hitting this sprocket or gear, making this unit unusable. Now I'll put this back together. Grab all the steel balls and push them in their chamber. There will be resistance. Here's a cone-shaped stopper, and you'll see a hole. That needs to line up with that right there. So we'll go in this way. As you push it, it's harder and harder to push. There's more pressure on it. Grab this. While holding that cone-shaped stopper the whole time, so the balls don't fly out again, I'm putting the black bracket on. Now put all screws back in with the Torx T20 screw bit. Now this screw right here, I'm going to, have to put your flat tip back here because you need to line up that piece that I showed you earlier. So when you put the screw on, you know it's on when it's when it's not turning. Screw each screw back in with a Torx T20 screw fit. Grab the winder, snap it on. Start turning it counterclockwise. You'll notice as you keep turning, the belt to the right is being retracted. Once it can't turn anymore, while still holding the top piece, screw the three screws back in with a Torx T10 screw bit. Keep the clip on the seatbelt, because otherwise it will start retracting. There we go. So just to give you a good idea, this spring goes here, right? But what's happening inside is the spring is right on here. And see how it kind of conforms to this groove? It then, when, when that knob turns, it goes through here, like so. So now I'll show you what I mean. So, when you put this in, like this, put it down, like so. And see this hole right here? That will line up with that. Cool. Now, see how this is like that right now? There's a gap. Well, there won't be a gap as you push the spring back. There we go. Spring is in. See that? And there's really, there's no gap anymore. Now for this orange piece. Now this thing, here's the spring for this. This goes in this little thing like that. Now, there's a little protruding piece right here. That spring goes right in there. And then this hole goes right here. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna line the spring up first. If you drop it, that's okay. You just put it back in. Okay, I got it on there. And it's a spring, so you just, oops, see, it came out. Okay, so let's do that again. Kind of hold that in place. Once it's on, Okay, good, and I got it. I should have it. Snap that in. Perfect. See that? The spring's in right there. Right there. And you can see the other spring right there. 
that is now snapped in place. Okay, see, that's in nice and tight. Grab this piece. It uh, slides in perfectly. See this? That's how it looks. Now grab this plastic cover piece. Line it up with its hole. I like to use the back of my screwdriver in this case. Oops. To get this side, I like to take a flat tip and a hammer. Hammer that in. Make sure that's on tight. Use a mallet, preferably. And tap these in. Make sure it's tight. See how that's nice and sealed right here? Nice and sealed. That's good. Now to test it again. Go ahead and test it. Now, if you start pulling it like this, it's not going to work. Uh, don't panic. The reason why is this seatbelt has to be pretty much positioned in such a way that it will free the belt up. Right now, I'm going to try to keep it straight. Let it go in a little bit, and now, there you go, see? And that's all of it. Now I'm going to release some of it. Let's see? Now it's hard again. Now I'm going to let it retract a little bit, and now pull it slowly. There you go, see? Now, if I would have done it this way, see, look, and I'm trying to test it, it's just not working, right? So, if you put it vertical, let it retract a little bit, and up, now it retracts. So I know this is good again. See? Go ahead and loosen a little bit. And now put a good clip on it. So it doesn't go all the way back in. Because if it goes all the way back in and you're putting this in your car, guess what you have to do again? Take it off and do this again. I'm now going to reinstall this on my car. I have a different video you can check out on how to install this. I'll leave that in the description below. If this video helped, please like and subscribe. Check out the other helpful videos and hacks on this channel. And tell me your thoughts on this video in the comments below. Until next time, keep learning, saving money, and fix car yourself. See you soon.